Guys, hi. <laughs> hi. So, Lena found out some big information at the end of last season. Did she? Yeah, oh, but you know. What information was that? She found that Carrot Car is not a natural blonde. <laughs> so, what, it's how, okay. <laughs> I'm, I'm not a natural brunette. How is that going to Are you a natural her? redhead? No. Really? <laughs> not shocking. Not <laughs> shocking. Um, yes, that was. Um, that was a, a cliffhanger that I wasn't expecting. I think we all know that. They didn't tell us till quite late on that it was going to happen. And I think the way that they did it, and especially having John Fryer, so great. unbelievable. And that scene, the way he, the sort of anger and the venom that he spat at me when I did it, it was just so easy to portray a broken human being in it. And, and I think I was very, and we are very lucky to have had him on the show. So lucky. And it just, it takes so everything lucky. up. And it takes the Luther storyline up another lot. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, but yeah, you sort of see, you see uh, Lena at the end of season four, you, you assume that she's broken, but you don't know. It leaves us on this amazing, ambiguous note. Furuch as a character and as an actor, it gives you so much to do, and it keeps you all guessing, because I know there's been a, a lot of guessing about this particular issue for a while. Um, <laughs> and you know what's great? It means you all have to tune into season five to figure out what happens. <laughs> in the box, in the box for that already. <laughs> Andrea, congratulations. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Yay! Andrea, congratulations on your new series right now. Thank you so much. How is that, uh, like, like, what differences are you noticing going into season five now that you've got that expanded? Well, I really feel like I got a taste of it last season. The second half of last year was fa fairly Eve heavy. Um, and I'm so incredibly grateful. I mean, when I when I first came onto this show, I thought I was just the kind of comic relief, and it was a bit of a throwback to the old Superman movies, and it was really cool. And I tried to make her quirky and fun and memorable, um, but I had no idea that we would be deep diving into this amazing arc. And I love that she's an enigma. I love that you never really know where she's going or what you're going to get with her. Um, and there's so much more to be explored with that, with Leviathan and where we left off at the end of last season. So. There's more to come. And I think Tess Marker fits in so perfectly with the show. You know, it's, it's all about strong female characters. It's all about putting a different spin on the Superman's myth and story. And, and the character of Tess Marker does fit in exactly with that. And then Andrea took it and made it so something special. You know, like I said, she came in for a couple of episodes and we're like three or four years later and she's made a series regular and that is a testament to how good she is and how talented she is and how much she don't cry don't cry <laughs> I'm, I'm emotional hormonal so <laughs> watch it out it is it is it's the, the ability to watch somebody take a couple of scenes and create a, a, an entire character out of it has become a major part of our show yeah. mm -hmm. I may have been angling to have her made series regular since like like for so long so it's really nice <laughs> But it is cool coming from Valerie Perrine created a really interesting character in the original movies, and I've been lucky enough to get to know her. She actually left me a mess. I didn't tell you this. Really? She left me a mess, a voicemail when I became a regular. And it was just the most adorable thing. She's like, from one test mocker to another, I want to say congratulations. It's the sweetest message. And she's quite ill. She has Parkinson's. Um, but lovely woman. And what she created, I kind of wanted to take a little bit, a hint of that, and kind of run with it and pay homage to what she did back in the original movie. Are we wrapping? That pardon? You know, that was like a... There was a lot of revelations for, for Lena last season. And, you know, from finding out, A, that everybody lied to her, there is this to have to deal with, that this woman who she has believed she was the second class with, you know, that Lex was always the more important, that she was always maligned, that she was always not really her daughter. To find out really that this person does love them, what does that do to you to believe that this person always hated you? And also, she's not particularly a nice person. And you're like, what, what does this mean for you and your relationship and going forward? And especially in the light of, of everything that has been told and found out for, for Lena at the end of season four, does that mean that her relationship with her mother is going to be stronger? Because to be fair to Lillian, she's one of the few people who's never really lied to her. She's been harsh and she's been cruel and she's been up, but she's never, now as Lena's discovering, she's always kind of been honest with her. So what does that mean going forward for this sort of mother-daughter relationship? I'm not quite sure yet. 
I'm just hoping it means more Brenda. We love oh, Brenda. God. I know you hear this a lot from my face, but she is like a magical unicorn. I know, like I know. The I know. most elegant, elegant woo-woo woman I've ever met. Wonderful, wonderful human. I'm just gonna say, like, Team Luther is pretty strong, guys. <laughs> I mean, I know they're technically the bad guys, whatever, but they're, they're, they're pretty, we're pretty good. It was good. epic days in that Oval Office. Oh, yeah. That season. <laughs> that was fun. <laughs> With our the bad guys? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. Thank you. Thank you. Sorry.